Hi, I'm Lane Bynum, Principal Architect with AWB Engineers. We're out here today with our completion of one of our most recent facilities and as the Principal Architect involved with this project, my primary responsibility is to coordinate all of the various design disciplines that go into a facility such as this and to help orchestrate the whole project to see that it all works together to have a finished product that meets the needs of the client and meets all the necessary regulations. And if you come with me, we'll take a look inside and we'll take a look at some of the aspects of the design and all the various components that have to be coordinated to end up with a completed project such as this. The primary source of initial information on developing a facility such as this comes from the owner, the end user themselves, and we can learn a lot from them. And the only way we can develop a facility that fully meets their needs is to take everything that they tell us and utilize that in conjunction with keeping their budget in mind and some of the other important aspects is meeting regulatory requirements. That could be the building code, the life safety code, accessibility requirements, energy conservation requirements, all play a heavy role in the development of a facility that not only meets their needs, meets their budget, but also meets all of the regulatory requirements that have to be met. In speaking of the various codes that have to be considered in the development of the project, it's multifaceted. There's many regulatory agencies just within the building itself, let alone the site design and various aspects associated with it, but within the building, obviously one of the primary aspects of concern that most codes are developed around is life safety, with heavy focus on fire safety. From the very beginning, we have to look at the use of a building. What is the intended use group? What will the building be constructed of? Will it be combustible, non-combustible? All of those components weigh in on how large of a building can actually be built. Uh, what are the limitations? Will a sprinkler system be required to, to allow a certain size building? A facility such as this size requires unlimited area. With that, we have to be concerned with how close are any other buildings. What is the clearance around the building to property lines? Ensuring that the building is fully sprinklered. Once that's determined and we know our limitations, then we can start coming into the building and factoring in other aspects of the code. Tied in with that, all buildings today, there are many requirements to make the buildings accessible to those with physical disabilities of various types. So there's specific requirements that have to be met for clearances to doors, clear spaces in front of fixtures, accessible toilet facilities, accessible means of entering the building as well as exiting the building. So all of these components come together and what seems to be just an abstract door in a particular location may have a very specific purpose for being there to make sure that we comply with these requirements. So uh, another aspect in recent years it has become more and more of a priority in the development, the design, overall design of a building is the requirements for energy conservation. Much of that is taken care of in the mechanical designs using high efficiency HVAC equipment and in electrical lighting, the use of LED lights that are used in this facility. But from the standpoint of the architectural design, much of it involves the envelope of the building, the thermal qualities of the building itself. In a facility such as this, where we used insulated metal panels, they are highly efficient and resulted in this facility having an exceptional insulating quality, as well as the significant amount of insulation that's in the roof of this facility because of the coolers, freezers, and other areas that, that require greater thermal insulation. In conclusion, the overall work of the architect, the architect of record, somebody serving as the project manager in the design group, is to take all of the various design disciplines that go into a building such as this, marry that with the owner's needs, their wants, the requirements of the operations that they provide, their budget, all of the various regulatory requirements, and to coordinate that into a finished product that complements the business, allows them to work efficiently, provides a facility that maintains a level of comfort for the workers and meets the owner's end budget and end desires.